You know, one method of carry that I get asked about quite often is appendix carry. And lately I've seen kind of a renewed love affair with appendix carry in the gun community. I see articles from people saying, oh, these are some great appendix carry holsters, or this is why you should appendix carry. In fact, today I saw an article by Mike Seeklander, and he was talking about, this is why I appendix carry and why I think you should appendix carry, etc. cetera. Uh, now I'm not gonna go into the reasons why he gives, but he basically says that the uh, advantages outweigh the disadvantages. And I'll link the article below so you can read what he had to say and decide for yourself. Now, I'm not slamming Mike Seeklander. Don't think that. I'm sure he's a very competent instructor. I'm sure he's a better instructor than me. I'm sure he's a better marksman than me. I bet he's an even better kisser than me. And I bet his little goatee tickles ever so gently when he does. But that's beside the point. Tonight, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about appendix carry. Now, like I said, in his article, he talks about how he thinks the advantages of the appendix carry outweigh the disadvantages. And I think that's totally wrong. I couldn't disagree with it more. And I'll tell you why. If you're a guy like me, you're, uh, let's say, voluptuous in areas that you weren't quite so voluptuous in many years ago. So you've got a little bit more in the belly area than you used to have, and a little bit more in the belly area than a lot of these guys that promote appendix carry have. Now, because of that, unless I want to carry my gun so freaking low that I'm going to have to wear my pants down to the point where people can see whether I shaved my pubes into a heart or a star that week, I'm going to have to wear my gun up to where it's actually pushing against my belly. My belly is going to be pushing the handle out a little bit, which is going to be pushing the barrel in, and it's going to be pointed straight at Little Yankee and the twins, and that's not a good thing. And even if you are a thinner, more fit person and you go into a ready position when you see trouble, uh, it's just kind of an instinct that people will bend their knees a little bit, lean forward a little bit, and that is actually a good shooting stance. So even if you're thinner and you do that, you're forcing the barrel of that gun down towards your bad touch zone, and you don't want to do that. Because let's face it, other than when you're cleaning your gun, the time that you are most likely to unintentionally fire that weapon is when you're drawing it. And when that happens, you don't want it pointed at your naughty bits. And if you're lucky, you just turn yourself into a soprano because also when the gun's pointed down like that at that angle, depending on where you carry your gun, a lot of times it's pointed right at your femoral artery. Shooting yourself into femoral artery is not something you want to do. Trust me, it's not something you have to do to find out it's a bad thing. Just don't do it. Don't take the risk of doing it. So for me, with my little glandular issue that causes me to not quite be so slim as I used to be, and let's face it, I'm probably never going to be as slim as I was when I was 25, because at my age, that would take a lot of effort, a lot of diet, a lot of exercise, and that's hard, and I don't want to. So I have to deal with the body I got, and it's not a great body for appendix carry. And even if you've got an excellent body, it's still not a great body for appendix carry if you're ever going to be bending over or moving in any way when you're getting ready to fire the gun. Because even if you're really thin, that gun is still probably pointing at something. At least I hope it is, because it's probably going to be perpendicular with your body. And I hope some things on your body stick out a little bit further than flush. It's for these reasons I just don't think appendix carry is a good idea, no matter what certain people are telling you. I don't think the benefits outweigh the risk, because I don't think it's worth the risk of blowing your dick off. Now, a lot of people will say, well, no matter how you carry, you're going to sweep yourself a little bit. Well, I don't really think that's true. If you know how to draw from a three o'clock position, you're not really going to sweep yourself, at least nothing vital. And if you're cross drawing, you're not going to sweep yourself either. You're going to sweep everybody around you, but screw them. This is about you. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do. It's not my place to tell you what to do. And to be honest, I really don't care if you blow your own balls off enough to make a big deal about it. So I'll be out there and want to go, oh, he doesn't like appendix carry. He's a hater. Go ahead and do it. I don't care, but I'm not going to take the risk of blowing my own nuts off every time I draw my gun and have to get a wig and a reality show. So if you want to consider appendix carry as a viable method of carry for you, go right ahead. Like I said, you'll miss your nuts more than I do. At least I hope so. So if you want to do it, go ahead. But I would urge you to keep one thing in mind, and that is the slogan for appendix carry, which is appendix carry, because no one needs two testicles. draw my gun, blow my balls off, and Sorry have to... Your homie. God fucking damn! Homies. Zyler!
out there going to get all upset about, oh, he don't like appendix carry. You better just... Fuck! The time that you are most likely to have a negligent, negligent, the time that you are most likely to have a negligent discharge, negligent, other than when you're cleaning your gun, the time that you are most likely to have a negligent discharge, because let's face it, other than when you're cleaning your gun, the time you're most likely to unintentionally fire your gun is when you're drawing your gun. And when you're drawing your gun,